Hey guys, it's Sanjana. Welcome back to my channel. Hope you guys are all doing really well. For today's video, I just wanted to tell you guys about what I actually do at work. I receive a lot of emails, DMs, um, people asking me, you know, what is it that you actually do when you go to work or, you know, working from home in this instance. So I thought, why not make a video on this and, you know, talk about all the nitty gritty details and, you know, give you guys a better understanding of what an actual risk consultant or a risk manager does. And because I know a lot of my viewers are, you know, some transitioning from that high school to uni phase um, into the corporate world. So, you know, you've got a lot of questions. You want to know what everything is about. So you make that right decision. So I thought this would be perfect for you guys if you are interested. So let's just get started. So I thought I'd give you guys just a very brief context as to what it is that I do. In case you are new to my channel, then welcome. So basically, I am a risk consultant. I've um, actually been promoted to a risk manager. So risk consultant was at KPMG but at my new position um, I am a risk manager so we sort of manage portfolios I work at one of the big four banks in Australia um, I've been in this position now one year so I marked my one year anniversary this week actually so um, I can't believe it. it's just flown so basically what I do is that I manage a portfolio so we are actually in the consumer so my team is part of the consumer bank team um, we've got the corporate bank we've got business bank so we obviously look at the consumer consumer side of things so that's more like you know credit cards mortgages mortgages is the primary thing that we look at um, home loan processes etc etc and deposits so basically what my work involves is me sort of talking to the business our internal business stakeholders trying to understand what the controls are and whether they're adequate enough effective if not then we need to obviously raise that and flag that with them to sort of improve and implement new controls if there's no actual control there or sort of you know enhance their previous um, controls so I'll go in a little bit of a deeper dive that's just a brief sort of um, overview of what I do but I would also like to draw your attention to one of my older videos um, I think I shot this in November last year so it's not too old I think I would have been in the um, the banking job for about I started in August September October so three months so I made that video three months after working there but um, do refer to that video I'll link it up here for you guys as well basically that sort of talks about the initial phases of me you know joining that new job and you know the comparison between KPMG and the new job so in banking so yeah definitely check that out if you want to get a little bit more insight but I'm not going to talk about that because you guys all know about my previous experience I've got so many videos on this about you know my progression and you know how I landed this banking job you know venturing out into the industry after sort of landing my gig at KPMG which is one of the um, big four accounting slash consultancy firms so basically in my day-to-day -day work what I'm doing while I'm working from home because I haven't been back into the office since March so in my day-to-day -day work there are sort of three to four main primary tasks that you know a risk consultant or a risk manager would be involved at I'm giving this purely based of my experience of you know working within the risk management teams so this could be different at other places but I feel like the crux of it is essentially the same um, fundamentally you know you've got your controls risks um, if there's any obligations or standards that you need to sort of adhere to I feel like risk around the world is predominantly the same thing so uh, basically we have three main sort of categories which I'm going to categorize everything in but before I begin I thought I'd just give you guys a little bit of an understanding of what a control actually is because I feel like I'm going to be mentioning it a fair bit. So a control is something that mitigates risk. Now an example of this would be, you know, your typical example, the preparer and the reviewer. So for example, if there's a report to be delivered, then, you know, you want someone there that's obviously, you know, preparing the report, but you want the reviewer who's going to review the figures and the outcomes and the recommendations, etc., to be different to the person that prepared the report. You know, you want that fresh pair of eyes looking at that report, making sure, you know, nothing's being missed and you're sort of capturing or, you know, making sure nothing sort of slips through the cracks. That's a control in itself. The preparer and reviewer checking, that's a control. It's an action that sort of, you know, mitigates or prevents any sort of risk or any mistake from occurring. You can think of a risk as something like, you know, what could potentially go wrong? So yeah, there are many different controls um, in an organization. Controls are very important for an organization. They sort of ensure that there's adequate processes and within those processes there are controls that are there to sort of avoid disruption or, you know, cause any sort of risky behavior within the organization. But yeah, that's basically what a control is. All right, now getting to the three or four different categories which I've divided all this up in or the first type of work 
that I'm sort of involved in is basically review slash project type work. So briefly, um, I'm going to obviously go into a little bit more detail, but briefly this is like the scoping, the conducting of the walkthroughs, the testing, the documenting, um, having those meetings and everything, you know, identifying those findings or observations, and then finally wrapping everything up and having that closeout meeting and then the report. So that's basically an overview, you know, if you are working on a project or a review, then those are the, you know, tasks that you'll have to complete to get that review completed. So I feel like I would say like 60 to 70% of my the bulk of work that I do is project or review based work. We are assigned a number of controls. So when I come into the process, it depends which step of the process you are sort of brought into. I've worked from, you know, the scoping to you know, the reporting side of things all together as well. Sometimes I'll just be asked to do some control testing and have those meetings, etc, etc. So it really just depends. But um, I'm definitely happy to say that I've got good sort of understanding of the entire process because I've got experience within that working at, you know, the bank as well and at KPM. So that's what typically a normal review sort of looks like going through those different processes. So I'll go through um, what those actually mean in a little bit more detail. So scoping is the first step of the process. Basically, this is where you try to identify what the objective or what the main purpose of the review is going to be. You know, what sort of controls are you going to test? What are the outcomes going to be? Basically, why are you doing this sort of thing? So scoping takes place. You have to, you know, create a scope document that outlines everything um, because this obviously has to go to the business and you know higher levels of management to get actually endorsed and improved for you to actually start and begin to conduct the review so what you would also do prior to actually creating the scope would be to obtain an RCM a risk control matrix from the business so so basically, whichever sort of division or team of the um, organization you're working at, you want to test. Let's take mortgages, for example. Um, let's take home loans. So if you were to go ahead and do a review on home loans, then you would need to go in, um, speak to the business and talk to them about, you know, what are their areas of concern? You know, are there any sort of critical things that they want you to look at? Because coming from a risk assurance perspective, we are sort of coming in and making sure that whatever controls are there in place and whatever the business first line of defense is sort of doing in the you know the day-to-day -day tasks we have to come in to make sure that everything is smoothly running no risks or you know controls are being overlooked at you need to make sure that you know they're doing everything correctly so um, you would go to the business and because they would have a good understanding of you know all the controls and everything that's sort of operating within their business you would speak to them to create that risk and control matrix which outlines all the risks obligations if any um, the controls processes, the owners, um, a little bit of a description. So there would be a, a fair few um, controls on that listing. It's usually an Excel document. And then our job is to go through, pick and choose uh, based on, you know, the business's sort of decisioning on what is critical and what is not. We make our own assessment as well. And then we go ahead and pick a few controls um, to form part of our review. So this doesn't need to be all the controls on the risk and control matrix. This could be all of them, this could be some of them, or it could not even be any of them because all the controls are sort of, you know, mundane admin sort of um, related tasks and they're not really critical in nature. So once you've confirmed the controls, obviously that will go into the scope document that's obviously issued and approved, etc. And then you'd go ahead and start conducting your walkthroughs. So this process is where you sort of set up time, set those calendar invites, make sure you know the right stakeholders are part of your meeting you send that through um, as an invite to the stakeholders locking in a time to make sure everyone can make which is usually really hard to do so yeah this time is usually set to understand the control um, a little bit about the process because the process gives you a little bit more context um, to understand you know, and pinpoint what the control actually is and basically go into the walkthrough with a mindset of you know what potentially could go wrong within this whole entire process process and you know what risks are we trying to you know avoid so we need to go in with that mindset to conduct the walkthrough these typically take about 
one hour I would say if not if not more fully understand you know the process the control um, ask for any sort of you know follow-up questions etc etc so once that is all done then we move on to sending out a document request list so this is basically you know during the walkthrough if you've identified any sort of you know process documents any sort of additional supporting evidences that could aid you in you know understanding what the control actually is and for documentation purposes you would then form a document request list which is basically just a list of all the documents that you're going to ask the business to send over to you so some stakeholders are really good where they send you in documents sometimes even on that day or in the afternoon or potentially the next day um, but sometimes it can take you know up to weeks depending on how busy the business actually is because they could be customer facing and they are sort of the primary um, face of the business because that's where all the operations are occurring so yeah they can be busy now next once we've received all of that documentation or even if we haven't received it we can get started on documenting the design effectiveness and the operating effectiveness so design effectiveness is basically the the whole design Design of the control like has it been created in a way to actually mitigate a risk and operating effectiveness is just to make sure that the control is actually operating as it should be based off the design effectiveness so we have a number of attributes which we are required to test depending on you know what type of review you're doing if it's a SOX review which is a Sarbanes-Oxley review then you definitely need to make sure that you sort of adhere to that standard because that's an international standard and there's a lot more sort of information required for that but if it's a typical ordinary sort of thematic kind of review then you don't need to you just pinpoint the attributes that you think are relevant and necessary to sort of identify and document that control adequately now during this process once you've sort of you know documented the control you've got all the information you need um, you're going ahead with your testing you can usually have a good understanding of where you think the control is going to be placed how it's going to be rated is it going to be effective is it going to be you know requiring improvement or is it going to be unsatisfactory then this is a time to make that decision because you've got everything now you can sort of formulate that and see whether it's actually working or not and then if if it isn't and you have identified some issues some findings observations then you would need to document that um, into another template which is sort of like an issue write-up sort of template which you will then use and formalize everything that you've identified as a concern to the business this will be related to the business it will have sort of a description what you think the concerns are um, some recommendations things like that and who the respective owners of these issues are going to be because they need to be addressed at some point so yeah once you've created that sort of issue right up you obviously liaise that with the business make sure that they're comfortable with it there's no there's not been any sort of misunderstanding with what you've understood and what they've understood so you come to an agreement that you know yes there is an issue um, we need to resolve it due date to sort of organize and fit and then we load that up onto our sort of risk management documentation admin system and then once that's all done and you've sort of got confirmation that there is an issue in place um, then you will need to go into the reporting stage and the reporting stage as you all know is just you know giving that final sort of conclusion that final closure to the review this obviously includes you know your normal things like the executive summary the body the conclusion everything in between and then this is also sent to the business as one final piece of you know the review process so yeah that's basically what the review slash project side of things sort of looks like I'm currently working on a project at the moment so I'm at the you know testing phase of things but yeah that's essentially what the review project side of things look like pretty full-on but I think it's pretty dynamic because everything's gonna be different every single time you've got different controls different areas of the business that you need to talk to and really it's just it's just always different because we're never testing the same sort of control so next moving on to the second sort of piece of work that I could potentially be working at when I am working at my job so that is issue remediation or issue closures so as I mentioned just before if we identify any sort of you know findings or any observations from our review or project work then these obviously need to be raised and sort of 
formally raised onto a document management, onto a risk management system, outlining you know what the issue is, you know what are the recommendations that we propose, and or whether the business has agreed to act upon them. So this, so this will have a respective issue owner um, who will be responsible to make sure that this issue is actually you know addressed and they they actually work towards completion. Um, there is also a due date as well, which we usually set. It's usually about a year, I think, just to give adequate time. But depending on what the issue is if it's a small one then obviously you know maybe two to three months if it's a long if it's a big issue which requires sort of system implementation that could be one to two years so with issue remediation so second line which is risk assurance are required to go in and make sure and check that you know those issues have been correctly addressed and actually been implemented what's the point of us raising issues if the business is actually not going to you know complete them or look into them so we go back in and once they've uploaded all their documentation everything is ready depending on the severity of the issue we can either do a desktop review and close that issue out and make sure and say that we are satisfied and you know no further testing or checks are completed but if it is sort of a high more critical you know issue then we are required to perform a full design effectiveness and operating effectiveness testing which means having another walk through sitting with the business discussing you know what's changed how you know what's changed with the process what's the new sort of process involved you know with this new control being enhanced how does that impact everything etc etc so you go through from that process onwards to make sure that you are satisfied the business is satisfied that everything's been being done correctly so yeah very lengthy process but then again that's our role we try to go in a little bit more you know of a deep dive more detailed testing just to make sure that everything has actually been captured and fully covered off now moving Moving on to number three. Now, if we're looking to sort of review a different section of the business that we've never reviewed before, or come up with a new methodology to test things and really change things up, then we could potentially be involved in sort of pilot reviews. So running pilot reviews allows you to sort of test a smaller section of the business, come up with you know the right methodology, the right processes, the right templates, etc., to make sure that you once you run this smaller sort of review and testing pilot then you are able to implement this across a wider group um, you know, within the bank as well and sort of streamline that process, make sure it's consistent. So there are a lot of pilot reviews that you can sort of partake in. And the last sort of piece of work, so number four, the last piece of work that we can help out with is you know helping to create methodologies um templates scaffold frameworks for testing you know how are things supposed to be done you know process documents that kind of stuff so you can definitely um also work on that as well i've definitely done a little bit of work on that helping out um, around you know making sure that there are consistent practices in place so that everything is streamlined and works in a very effective and efficient manner. So second line or risk assurance is always sort of working on that just to make sure that everything is functioning in a very cohesive manner and you know we all work towards the same deadline same goals to make sure that there is that consistency amongst the work that we do um in terms of that i don't think there's anything else unless there's like ad hoc reviews which you can sort of jump on you know in case your diary or your calendar is free you don't have a piece of work that you're working on then you can jump on and help other people that are you know testing some controls you can pick up about two to three controls and you know help that review get over and cross the deadline so um there's always some ad hoc work always lying around um, there's always something to do, you know, if you are in risk management, um, definitely a lot of work to be done um, because you need to go around the entire organization, make sure that everything has been tested um, at least once in the last two to three years, I believe. So that always needs to be done. And if you're working on socks, then you definitely need to do that annually. So that's quite a big piece of work, which I have also worked on as well. So yeah, that's a little bit about, you know, risk consulting. I thought, I think I've given you guys a little bit more detail in terms of how everything works. I receive a lot of questions about this. So I hope this sort of answers your questions as well. Um, in case I haven't, then definitely leave a comment down below. And if not, then also you can send me an email as well. But yeah, I hope you guys found this super informative and helpful and hopefully it answers your questions. But yeah, let me know what other suggestions or other, and other video ideas you would like me to film. I'll be happy to do that because I'm always seem to be running out of ideas. So definitely let me know. And yeah, I hope you guys really enjoyed the rest of your day or your weekend and I will catch you guys in my next video. Thanks guys.